how do you know they're hungry? So I've spoken about um, on-demand feeding and feed, feed them when they look hungry. Um, what do they look like when they're hungry? They probably look something like this, okay? So there is a booklet. Um, it will be attached to the end of this video um, and you'll see this page in the booklet. Um, you'll see up here, we've got some early cues and this is your baby just telling you, I'm hungry, okay? What he's doing, he's probably moving his head from side to side, he's probably licking his lips, he's maybe sucking on his hand a little bit. Um, on the wards, you might hear the midwives call this rooting, okay? So he's looking like he's rooting around for something. Um, if, we don't, if we don't notice those early cues, um, what you might notice then is that he'll kind of he'll kind of merge or move into these mid cues or mooching, okay? And what he's doing here is he's telling you he's really hungry. Um, he's stretching, his hand is probably in his mouth, he's probably sucking a little bit more vigorously, and he's really trying to let you know that he's looking for something to eat. Um, the very last thing he's probably going to do is start crying, okay? So late cues mean can me then feed me, okay? So it's very difficult to latch on a baby that's crying. Um, you'll find that if you try to put him in front of the breast when he's crying, he's just moving his head from side to side, he's probably gonna start pushing the breast away with his hand. Um, so these, these late cues are saying, calm me, then feed me. How are we gonna calm him? What's probably the most calming thing um, for your baby? A bit of skin to skin, okay? When you think about it, he's born and his environment completely changes from being inside you to being like out and about, out in this outside world, we put him on your skin and he instantly stops, he instantly calms. So can you see how um, a bit of skin to skin will absolutely calm a baby who's actually quite used to his environment, it's just that he got a little bit hungrier than he should have. Um, so a little bit of skin to skin and you'll find when you do that, it's nearly like you rewind him back to, to mid cues or early cues and you'll see on your chest, he'll start licking his lips um, sucking on his little hand um, and that's when you're gonna gonna pop him on front of the breast and and latch him on and if it's the middle of the night okay so you might you might by accident have slept through uh, early cues and mid cues or uh, rooting rooting or mooching um, and we know from earlier that like feeding a baby when we're all stressed out and uncomfortable isn't a great idea our oxytocin might not flow as well so if it's a thing that it's the middle of the night you wake up, you're in a bit of a panic, you're bursting to go to the bathroom, you need a glass of water. If your partner's beside you in the bed, it might be no harm just to strip baby down into his nappy, pass baby to your partner, wake your partner, and your partner could do even like five minutes of skin to skin just to settle baby while you go get yourself sorted. So you're coming back and you're feeding baby nice and calm and nice and chilled, and it'll be much more relaxing for you as well. Um, feeding positions, okay, so with any of the feeding positions, like you can see there, cradle hold on the top left, cross cradle, football, or you'll sometimes see it called rugby hold on the bottom left, or a lying down position, any of these would be really good for feeding one baby at a time. And then obviously on the right hand side, you've got feeding twins, okay. On the left hand side, or I suppose with any baby, feeding, feeding one baby or two baby, um, when you, you want to support their little head, okay? And you want to make sure their tummy is facing your tummy, okay? So we say, tummy to mummy, okay? So we've got tummy to mummy um, here, okay? In this kind of cross cradle position. We've got tummy to mummy here in our rugby or our football hole position. So baby's tummy is always facing in towards mum's tummy, okay? In a lying down position, you're doing the same. He's tummy to mummy, okay? When you're supporting his little head, Okay. Their heads need support. Oops, sorry. Um, their heads need support. They're heavy for them. Um, so, that, you know, just a thumb and finger at the nape of the neck is ideal. Okay. They don't like this. If you do this, which sometimes it can be tempting because you, you feel like you're supporting their head a bit better, but if you do this, they're just automatically going to start pushing their head against your hand. Okay. And they're going to be less likely to latch on well. Okay. So, hand supporting the nape of the neck and baby's tummy facing your tummy, okay? Um, next slide, we have the correct latch, okay? So you probably heard, usually the two go together, tummy to mummy, nose to nipple, okay? So we've got tummy facing mummy's tummy, baby's nicely aligned so that he's gonna uh, latch 
and feed well and efficiently. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to pop the nose in line with the nipple. Okay, so baby's just showing us some early cues here. He's opening and closing his mouth, licking his lips a little bit, um, and we're going to line the nose up with the nipple. Then he's probably going to give us a big wide mouth like this guy here, and we're going to latch him on. Okay, and we look down at him, we'll know he's well latched on because he's going to look something like this. Okay, so we can see this baby is well latched on because number one, he's got big wide lips. Okay, so he's got wide lips, his lips are flanged out, so his lips, I suppose, are out as opposed to being drawn in on themselves. Um, usually their cheeks look quite full. If we look down and we see his cheeks all sucked in on themselves like this, it means he's not latched on properly. So his cheeks should look full and we shouldn't hear any noise. So a well latched baby, um, we shouldn't hear any noises or anything like this is a sign that he's not latched on properly. Um, we should have, like, as I said, wide mouth and as much of the nipple and areola in his mouth as possible. Okay. Um, and when we look at this picture, we can see like why that is so important, what's going on on the inside. Okay, so over here we've got um, baby A, so we can see he's well latched on, he's got all the characteristics of the, the previous slide, um, wide mouth, um, I suppose full cheeks, lips flanged out, as much of the nipple and areola as in baby's mouth as possible, and that baby probably isn't making any sounds okay then here this is baby a but it's just what's going on in the inside okay so we can see nipple and areola in baby's mouth this is baby's tongue here okay and the way that baby is going to i suppose stimulate some oxytocin production and some milk ducts to release some milk is if you imagine my hand is his tongue and his tongue laps up against so it laps rhythmically and when it does that pushes the nipple and areola against the roof of, of baby's mouth. So I suppose it's this rhythmical action, pressing the nipple and areola against the roof of the baby's mouth is going to, number one, stimulate some oxytocin, um, which is responsible for the flow of the milk, um, and it's also going to trigger all these milk ducts, which are going to allow milk to flow, okay? Then we look down here, so this is a well-latched on baby. It's going to be comfy for mom, um, baby's going to have a much fuller tummy after this feed because there's more oxytocin being produced and more milk ducts being activated. Then we look down here, I hate that word bad, maybe poor latch, um, baby C. So I suppose number one, as mum feeding, this would probably feel quite uncomfortable. You can see baby's just sucking on the nipple there. It's probably a little bit pinchy, probably a little bit ouchy. Um, so you'd recognize that as not being comfortable. Um, what's going on on the inside? We can see that like just the nipple is in the baby's mouth. Um, baby's tongue is probably just lapping up over the, the, the tip of the nipple, probably um, maybe stimulating like a little bit of oxytocin, maybe uh, trigger or activating a few of the ducts, but not like this, you know. So we're not producing as much oxytocin and we're not activating as many ducts. So chances are this baby probably isn't going to get as much milk. So not only is mum a little bit more uncomfy, um, baby's actually also probably not feeding as efficiently as well. Um, then we ask ourselves, like, which baby probably sleep better? My hunch is probably this guy up here because he is, you know, he's going to bed with a fuller, fuller belly. Um, which mom is going to sleep better? Probably the mom of this baby up here. Number one, because her baby's going to bed with a fuller belly. And number two, because her nipples are probably feeling a little bit more comfy because she hasn't been continuously feeding baby with a poor latch. 